Hello, I'm Ralf Kopsch, Senior Applications Engineer at ARM. In this video tutorial, I create a new project based on RTX using RTE, the runtime environment integrated in the Kyle Microcontroller Development Kit. As target hardware, I will use the popular Nucleo board L496ZGP by ST Microelectronics. However, the project setup works similar for other Cortex M microcontrollers that are supported with the device family pack in MDK. You can replicate this tutorial with the free MDK Lite version. The Nuclear board uses the high performance STM32 L4 microcontroller family. The devices are based on the Cortex M4 processor and offer a rich set of peripherals. For the Plinky example, I will use the LED on pin PB14. The Nuclear board includes a ST Link debug adapter and the USB connector interfaces to this ST-Link. The relevant driver for the ST-Link is already installed on my computer and I connect a USB cable for power supply and debug interface. On the PC I have already installed MDK along with the relevant software packs. Now I will start the Microvision IDE and create a sample application. To create a new project I select Project and next New Microvision Project. I create a suitable folder to store my project and enter a meaningful name, in this case my Plinky. Save creates the project and in the next step I will select the device that is used on my discovery board. Well in the database I select ST Microelectronics and I pick the exact microcontroller which is in this case the STM32 L496ZGTX. Here it is. This device selection defines essential tool settings like the memory layout and the flash programming algorithm. And now the Manage Runtime Environment window shows all the available software components from the installed software packs for this selected device. These components are ready to use building blocks for your software application and the links on the description open related documentation. I have decided to use the CMSYS RTOS 2 based on Kyle RTX 5 for my small Plinky application. Once I have selected the software component, the system highlights in yellow other required components and the validation output provides more details. CMSYS Core is the basic runtime system for a Cortex-M device. And finally, I need a device-specific startup code. Instead of manually selecting individual components, you may use the Resolve button that would automatically choose them for you. I now click OK to confirm my selection and this is reflected in the project window of Microvision. Bare metal programming of a device requires knowledge about the microcontroller itself and the hardware schematics. And you need therefore to study related documentation. And in the books window in MDK, you get easy access to it. Also, the RTE window gives you access to documentation that relates to software components. STM32 Cube is the hardware abstraction layer, so let me open this documentation. STM32 Cube MX is a graphical tool available from ST that allows you to configure the microcontroller. I did already install it on my PC. The manual explains project setup and CMC's driver configuration. Each section contains step-by-step -step instructions. For example, I will find RTX5 configuration instructions that I can use later for my little application. I select here STM32 Cube MX and I can start it directly using the play button. Cube MX simplifies the device configuration. For example, the pinout tab lets me configure I.O. pins. I configure here the LED output pin. I set it to GBIO output. 
At the Clock Configuration tab, I configure a core clock of 80 MHz. And at the Configuration tab, I make the settings for NVIC configuration as described in the documentation. I apply my settings and the chip configuration now already is complete. Let me generate the code from these settings and Cube starts to generate resulting code. Microvision has detected that new sources are available and when I close the RTE window the generated code is imported. In my project tree, I see now these results under the CubeMX Common Sources group. It contains three files where I can insert additional user-defined C code. The manual contains also source code snippets for my application. I will ignore the event recorder as I'm not using it here. It says that I should add the ZMSYS OS2 header to main.c. Just right click and select insert include file and choose that file. OK. Then I insert the whole get tick function. You can just copy and paste this code near the main function. OK. With a right click on source group 1, I add a new file called led.c. In this file, I create a new thread and add the code that is required to toggle the LED pin. I change the code so that the LED blinks in 1 Hz. And finally, I start this thread in main.c. This completes my little application. Make sure that you have installed the ST-Link driver. At the Options for Target Debug tab, I can then select ST-Link as Debug Adapter. At the Settings tab, I can confirm that the ST-Link Debug Adapter gets recognized. Next, at the Flash Download tab, I verify the settings for the flash programming algorithm. The STM32L4XX flash algorithm is suitable for the microcontroller that is mounted on my discovery board. I now build the Blinky application by pressing the corresponding button at the toolbar. The build output window confirms the successful build of the target. Use the download button and the flash download progress is shown. This will flash the executable of the project to the on-chip flash of the board. Now I start the debugger and click run to execute my Plinky application on the discovery board. The LED on the board should now start to blink and you may check the one second interval which indirectly confirms correct clock settings. This completes my little demo example offering an impression about the microcontroller development kit that you can download from our website to explore this tool by yourself. In my next video I explain the cool debugging features with ST-Link. If you have additional questions Visit Kyle.com or contact our sales team for further product details. Thank you for your attention.